What's going on guys, Magician Jaso here, and in this Rumble match we're facing off against our sister guild, Walker's Redux. We're going to go toe to toe with them, and they have become a top 5 team, so I'm looking forward to a hell of a fight. Let's get into it. First up is up against Butters, so let's see here. My opening hand, I only have my long stick with sharp rock as my only item, so we're going to go with that. I have a couple options though, I could go Congo Jack or Paddling Peggy. We'll see what Butters plays and decide next turn. So Butters opened with a Hatchet Boomhauer. So I'm still locked into my same combos. That hatchet has, has eight shield on there. So Paddling Peggy won't be able to one-shot that even with her 21 punch. So I don't want to be feeding into its hijack there with my craze. So my better move is going to be to make Congo Jack because Congo Jack has the cripple so that I won't be taking damage from his hatchet on the initial turn. And I also have my jab to break through for his shields there. So we're going to go ahead and make that Congo Jack combo. Next up, he drops a hose to the head in slot two there. So that's going to be a little bit annoying to deal with with its bomb and its healed armed cards. At this point, I have a couple options. I could try to set up a freezer burn with Doomsday. I could also do the whale um, hunter with Amy. Or I could throw, throw down my long stick and do my um, combos there with those two as well again. So I have a couple options here. It's going to be tough because that has 19 attack and it has that 17 bomb. So either way, I'm taking damage. I'm going to go with the long stick just because it has a bit more shield on it. And I can try to figure out what I want to do about this later. I'm going to draw this match out. Luckily, his hatchet's going down this turn. So he's not going to be building a wall on me. So I do have time to draw this out like I wanted to. So right here, I am going to take a bit of damage on both cards there, unfortunately. So I now need to combo something. I could go the paddling Peggy. Or I can go for another Congo and maintain my, um, maintain my cripple wall here which is the way I'm going to go because I want to just minimize all incoming damage. And by doing that combo, I did give my first Congo Jack a health boost there by 21. So that expands my health pool a bit, and it does give the initial Congo Jack in slot one more of a shield. So Butters went and comboed into Klaus on Wheels, which is a really good combo. It's annoying to deal with because it has a lot of health, a lot of leech, and it has that motivate to arm, which is annoying to deal with. So I'm taking quite a bit of damage at this point. I now need to get my heals up, so I'm going to play my Doomsday device. I can try to combo next turn with my Peggy for the Battle Axe Peggy. She has 20-something heal, so that'll actually help me out to get my health back up. And luckily, I did take out his hose to the head there on that turn. So now, things are finally in my court here to where I can try to turn it around and maintain my health back up to full so that I can get a higher score. So we're going to make that Battle Axe Peggy to take advantage of that 23 heal there. That's another boost on the initial Congo Jack and the Congo Jack in slot 2. So that does increase my overall health pool because of that boost. And now I'm also going to get that Congo Jack healed up because of the Battle Axe Peggy's heal there. So if you look, I'm already looking like I'm almost back to full health there. It should be over on this next turn. I don't believe he's going to be breaking through my shields there at that uh, two attack. So I just need to play my highest HP card on the field here because it's over this turn. So I want to expand my health wall as far as possible to maximize score. So that's why I dropped my Luis on the field. But it is over this turn. Congo Jack and Slot 2 will be taking out the cock gun and then Battle Axe Peggy will be ending it. Next up, we're up against Bat Mitch. Let's see. My only item is the long stick, so we're going to go with that. I'm kind of locked into that one there. Bat Mitch opens up with a quad rapture stand pre-combo. So I'm going to go ahead and just make my Congo Jack now, try to minimize the damage with the, um, the cripple there, and the jab will be busting through rapture stand, so I will be taking that out, fortunately, before it's able to do any sort of damage to me. So that works out really well in my favor here. So let's see. I drew my cat launcher. I can make the Whale Hunter next turn if I want. We're going to play Cat Launcher down on the field just because it has a lot of HP. So it will have a bit more shield to try to counteract against that Viking Peter's punch should it get hit. Yep, so nothing to it there. So I have some options. I can go another Congo Jack or I could have did the Amy one. I decided to do Congo Jack because the Viking Peter there actually does have the bodyguard, which would be blocking stuff. I would much rather have two Congo Jacks there with the cripple. So I'm crippling all possible cards on the field for them to minimize incoming damage. That way I would not be taking anything. And that worked out for me here because if you looked, had I not had that cripple on that chainsaw, if it went to the one Viking Peter instead, I would have taken quite a bit more damage and my Congo Jack would have been gassed. So it was the better move, I think. So we play Bazanga Bazooka on the field because that has my own bodyguard now to protect against punches. And it also has 14 healed armed cards, so it could help me get my cards up to full health should I need to get them up there. 
So they drop a Dr. Amy Wong in slot three there. That's a little scary because they can't make a Whale Hunter of their own. So unfortunately, the Chainsaw was able to break through that time, so I am gassed on slot one now, unfortunately. Let's see here. I have some options. I can go a third Congo Jack, or I can do a Whale Hunter Amy. If you look here, I did the Congo Jack because I was so focused on the cripple there, but that was a mistake. My Whale Hunter Amy would have been better because I need to ensure I destroy his Amy before he combos because if they make Whale Hunter, I'm in trouble. And sure enough, there's the Whale Hunter for Bat Mitch. So that was my mistake. Had I played my Whale Hunter, I probably would have taken out the Whale Hunt. I would have taken out the regular Amy before they even made the combo. But because I didn't, I'm now taking a lot of damage. And it's going to be my win this turn now. So I just have to play my highest HP card. But this could have easily been a high 90 to 100 had I just played my, um, my Whale Hunter instead of trying to build a whole giant cripple wall there where I didn't need it. Next match is up against Pow Wow. So my only item is the Bazanga Bazooka, so we're going to go ahead and open with that. I do have some options, though. It does combo with all three of my characters in my hand. So I do have options based on how Pow Wow plays his moves here. Pow Wow opens with a quad Peter. So let's see how I want to play this. His Peter is shielded by two for the um, for his gene character there. I could do Whale Hunter, unfortunately. like Even with my punches and jabs, that's not going to one-shot it, though. And then my other option is Congo Jack here. I could do that one to break through the shields as well, and it does have the cripple. I end up doing the Whale Hunter Amy, though, just because I do like the idea of having the bomb for whatever card drops in slot two, because no matter what I did, there was no way I was one-shotting that Peter. At least this way, I have a chance to bomb his card in slot two. So at this point, I just want to keep playing my armed cards to maintain my shields to maintain health. That's why we're playing Hatchet Boomhauer, as it is my only armed card in my hand right now. So luckily, we got a good punch there. We knocked down the Antichrist to 5 HP. So I'm in a pretty good spot. I think I take a little bit of damage here from the Antichrist. Not too much, though. So still in a pretty good spot. I'm now out of armed cards, though. So we're going to go ahead and just try to play my Dr. Amy Wong. Because she's high HP and she has that bodyguard. So the bodyguard will at least be protecting her from errant punches, some bombs. And it'll also be protecting Hatchet Boomhauer from punches and the like as well. So Pow Wow combos into the Gender Bender there in slot 1. That's going to be giving me a bit of damage. So here's the thing. I could combo my Whale Hunter right now and end it, but I want to give myself an extra turn to heal up. So we're going to play Cat Launcher in the final slot there. It's high HP, and there's just enough attack between Hatched and Dr. Amy Wong to where it's not going to be ending it this turn. So I do have an extra turn to get some heals in to try to maximize score here. And then it's definitely over this turn, so once again, I don't need to combo anything. I just play my highest HP card down on the field to expand the health wall to ensure that I get maximum score on this. And next up is up against Kyle B2002. I'm going to go ahead and open with my Doomsday as it is my only item card. I do have some options this next turn, though, so we'll see how we want to play it. They drop an Oktoberfest Amy quad. So here are my options. I could go for the Whale Killer with Leela. She does have the Leech there to help me and all the boost and um, everything. Whale Hunter, unfortunately, would be a good option if it would one-shot, but it won't one-shot. Freezer Burn's a decent option, too, because of the Cripple and Gas, so we're going to go with that one there, just to try to minimize incoming damage, and I'll have a heal, heal wall down the line to help my cards. So Kyle drops a Powder Puff, single fuse in slot 2. At this point, I have a couple options here. I do want to try to play towards the arm, though, so we are going to play Cartel Klaus. It has high HP, so it's unlikely that they're going to be breaking through with the attack there. And I do have the Leech and Gas there. Plus, the um, Hijack can help steal any craze or motivate, which actually works wonders here because he dropped a Half Dog Gene there. So I'm stealing all of that. We're going to play Long Stick now because it is my highest HP card as well as just being an item that I could potentially combo down the line here. So Freezer Burn is going to go ahead and do a little bit of damage there. Cartel Claus does some more damage as well. Powder Puff definitely is not breaking through here though because the shields are too high on my Cartel Klaus and I'm just hijacking all of that with my um, skill there on him. 
I've now broken through a lot of his walls there. So I'm going to go ahead and probably combo my Congo Jack here because I can use utilize the cripple here to ensure that no attacks are getting off the ground. And it's increasing my shield as well on that last card to ensure I'm not taking any damage. So Kyle drops his Mythic Peggy in slot one. That would have been scary if he comboed that early on. But at this point, it's going to be pretty much my win. I'm in a great spot here. So I'm going to just keep playing high HP cards on the field here just to maximize score. And it's over this turn, it's my win. And next matchup is up against Jigglypuff. So, I only have one character, a couple items. We're gonna do the Doomsday as it is my hardest hitting item card. JP opens up with a Jealous Bobby there. So I'm going to go ahead. I could do my Whale Killer, but I'm liking the Freezer Burn better just to minimize incoming damage. It'll be crippling it so it can't do an attack on the first turn here, and it's going to be gas, so it's going to die relatively quick. So Jigglypuff drops a Bazonga Bazooka in slot 2. It's a bit annoying to deal with with that Bodyguard and the heal it has there. So what can I do to counter that? I could make Whale Hunter Amy next turn with the Gingerbread Gun, so we're going to play the Gingerbread Guns down first just to take advantage of the shield from the Arm Bonus, and that will probably be my next move on this next turn here. I did drop the Jealous Bobby there though, so that worked out. I got lucky and JP dropped the Dr. Amy Wong there on slot 1 instead of comboing to their own Whale Killer, so I'm going to take full advantage of that and make my own Whale Killer here and just try to take out their Amy and that Bazonga before any bad things can be made against me. So there goes the Amy. That at least worked out for me there. So the Bazonga's still hanging in there, and then Jigglypuff dropped a Cat Launcher in slot 1 there. So that's got quite a bit of HP. Luckily, though, I'm in a good spot with my combos on the field. And I do have a Doomsday here with another Amy, so I could make another Whale Killer should I need to. At this point, though, I can either expand my health wall or do that, but we are going to go for that because that Bazonga's not falling right now. So I definitely want to make sure I have some countermeasures in, play, in place in case they do combo there. Because if they play a whale killer on me, I'm in trouble. So nope, just another item there. A big-ass gun in slot number three. So I'm not going to be taking too much of any damage this turn because of all of the health and shields I got going down on the field there. I do want to make sure I have a lot of damage on the field, field that I'm dealing though. So we are going to make another whale hunter Amy here. But between all the bombs and punches I have, I'm going to be doing a lot of damage there. And the jabs are going to be busting through their shields and walls there. So I'm in a pretty good spot. That did suck with that punch there, though, because that means the big-ass gun didn't take any of the bomb damage from the Whale Hunter in slot 2 there, which kind of stung. Because they were ended up, Jigglypuff ended up comboing the Rapture Stand there, and I am taking some damage now because of that, which was unfortunate. At this point, we're going to play Cat Launcher for the health, because I do want to expand my health while out here now that I have some damage on me. Luckily, Freezer Burn will be crippling the Rapture Stand for 21 there, so that does help me out a bit. And I am going to be getting some damage on it from my Whale Hunter there. I am going to still be taking some more damage on this next turn, though. It's definitely going to be over on my next attacking turn here, though, so I'm going to go ahead and play my highest HP card on the field to try to maximize my score here, because there's no point in comboing. And luckily, Freezer Burn healed everybody up to full, so that's going to be my 100. And next up is up against I Am Her for the win. I am going to thoroughly enjoy this. Let's open up with Doomsday. So what's, what's I Am Her have for me? He's got a Bazonga Bazooka. That's got some scary potential. So... I have some options now. I could do my freezer burn and do the um, the cripple and gas there. Or I could do my whale hunter Amy. Or I could do my whale killer Leela. I'm going to go with the killer Leela though just because I'm going to want that, um, that leech in there. Just because I know the combo potential his deck has. It could be a lot of hard hitting stuff and I'm going to want to have my health back up. So let's see what I Am Hers got for me here. Yep, plays the battle axe Peggy. So 
that's going to be annoying to deal with. It's going to be crazing a lot each turn there. I'm glad I went with the leech route just to keep my card alive. And if I can combo, I'll be able to boost my attack. So we're going to maybe go for that um, freezer burn and combo in slot 2 here next, because that'll give me some cripple and some more heal, as well as the gas. So Will Killer does some more damage there and is hanging in there with the leeches, getting back up to full. I Am Her drops a Dance of Peace in slot 2. Not too worried about that. I can eat through that for breakfast. I do want to make a combo here, though, just so that I don't lose my Whale Killer to the Battle Axe. So we're going to make Freezer Burn. That's going to boost my attack up of the Whale Killer by 21 and give me a boost of the health there as well by 23, which also increases my, um, my shield from the Arm bonus. So, yeah, I'm back up to full health with the Whale Killer there, and then the Battle Axe Peggy is definitely going to be falling this next turn. So I take a bit of damage on my Whale Killer. No big deal. Freezer Burn took a bit of damage too, but like I said, not a big deal. We'll play my Bazanga just because it's going to have the shield. It does have more potential heal for armed cards as well. And I have that 8 bodyguard should I need to be protected against punches or anything. But I am in a great spot because he's losing his ace in the hole in slot 1 there on this turn. And then with the heal from Freezer Burn, my Whale Killer's back up to full HP. So I'm in a really good spot. He drops the Hip Hop Bob in slot 1, which... Could be a scary card to deal with all the punch and craze, but my whale killer is already so high up there off the attack, I can one-shot it easy. At this point, I do want my freezer burn to get healed back up to full, so instead of comboing the Bazanga Bazooka, I'm going to play a high HP um, armed card down there, because I can take advantage of the heal from the Bazanga Bazooka to go to my freezer burn to heal it back up to full HP to try to maximize my score and make this 100. But his Hip Hop Bob is going down this turn from the Whale Killer. I'm not too worried about October Brow. It's not going to be breaking through my um, shields for Bazanga Bazooka. So everybody's now back up to full. So I Am Her now drops a Buzzsaw. Has a lot of HP and it has 7 payback. Even I have the shields right now though, so I'm probably fine. But I'm going to go ahead and combo Whale Hunter Amy anyways. Just to put Whale Killer's attack way over there to one-shot the Buzzsaw. Because I really want to drive the defeat to him home on this um, match here. I want him to feel the pain. So we're going to go ahead and just blast that card into oblivion and take the win here for 100. Next match is up against Near the Beach. So I only have my Candy Cane Gun as my item, so that's my default move here. And we'll decide on the combo afterwards. So let's see what Near the Beach has for me. He plays a Bazanga Bazooka. Again, scary combo potential. I have my Whale Hunt, uh, my Amy, I can do Whale Hunter or I can go Freezer Burn. Let's see here. It's a tough call to make here because they both have their uses depending on what he combos there. I do like Freezer Burn though. It has been working out for me pretty solidly this rumble because of the cripple and gas there. Especially if he makes a whale killer on me, I might want this to get rid of it. Yep, and there's the made the whale hunter there with the Amy there. So that gas will definitely be helping me out to get rid of that. So at this point, we're going to drop the Bazanga Bazooka because it has a little bit of the bodyguard there that will be protecting me a bit against the bombs and punches. And it does have 14 heal should I need it to heal back up. So we're going to drop the Bazanga Bazooka there. I could also make a combo on the next turn too should I need it. We'll see how much firepower I need because that Whale Hunter Amy's not going down this turn. That's for sure. Luckily, I am minimizing damage though with that cripple. So Near to Beach dropped a Roger in slot 2 there. So, yep, there's the punch on Bazanga. I blocked some of it with the bodyguard there. So, at this point, I can do my Whale Hunter, because I, I could have did my Leela combo there to have um, the, the Leech to try to get that card back up to full, but at this point, I wanted to ensure that Nerdy Beach's um, Whale Hunter Amy went down this turn, so I made my Whale Hunter just to ensure that went down, did not take any more damage. So, unfortunately, they did combo into Ricky Spanish there. Pretty annoying to deal with it with that 17 payback damage, that 17 gas, and it has 20 leech. So that's a very annoying card to deal with. At this point, I'm gonna I don't have much I can do. I have no items in my hand. So I'm gonna go ahead and just start throwing out high HP arm cards to try to keep my health up high. Cause that thing is shielded for 17. Here's the thing though, a better I play my hatchet, but a better move might have been to play my um my Leela for the motivate. Would that have put me over the edge? Because my Leela has 10 or 11 motivate no the attack is down there it wouldn't have given me the one shot there even with it so i think i still made the right move there because if i played leela she would have just taken bomb damage from the ricky spanish here yeah i think i made the right move so we'll go ahead and just keep playing out cards this one right here though was a mistake i played doomsday because my plan here 
was to combo into the freezer burn for some more heals on the next turn. However, I wasn't paying attention to their overall health and all of my attacks here because of the openings I'm going to have in um, his wall here. It's never going to get over that far on this. So I would have been better off playing my highest HP cards down the line to expand the health wall because it's over this turn. So I do play the high HP card here, but if I would have played another high HP card in the um, last turn slot there instead of Doomsday, I would have had a higher score because my Freezer Burn's not going to be making it up to 100 here of his health there. So unfortunately, this is not 100. This is a 99. So yeah, it could have been 100. I should have played that card. Next up is Ragagin. Let's see. I can go ahead and play my Doomsday for my hardest hitting card. I could make the Freezer Burn again should I need it. It has been working wonders for me this Rumble. So Ragagin plays Stewie. So here are my options. I could do my Whale Hunter to just do a crap ton of damage, or we can go for the Freezer Burn, which has just been my ace in the hole this whole rumble. We're going to stick with the ace because it's been working. The Cripple Gas combo is devastating, and the Heal All has been helping me get higher scores consistently. So Ragagin does play his Dr. Amy Wong there, so that is scary for the Whale Hunter potential. So I'm going to need to have a counter for that in place. So I think Bazanga Bazooka is my best counter because of the Bodyguard, and should they not combo, I do have that heal to Freezer Burn should I need it in Bazanga Bazooka. But we'll see how this goes. So Stewie is definitely dropping this turn. I did get a lucky cripple there on the Amy. And wait, there's the Whale Hunter Amy, sure enough. So I'm going to be taking a bit of damage here between the punches and bombs and everything. So at this point, I just need to make my Whale Hunter, I think. Because I can't risk letting their Whale Hunter live. I need to take that out. Because if I don't, it could turn into a loss. So luckily, I will be crippling all of the attack that time and doing a lot of damage there. Unfortunately, the um, Zap Brannigan hero will be cheering their Whale Hunter, so it is going to be doing enough damage to actually bomb my Freezer Burn, which was unfortunate. But hey, you do what you got to do. I'm going to play my Antichrist here now, because we can try to set up a, another heal with another Freezer Burn next turn, because the Whale Hunter is dropping this turn for sure. Yep, and there went the entire line, so I'm in a good spot here. I could expand the health wall more and try to end it next turn, but at this point, I just want to get more um, more heal to my Freezer Burn in slot 1. I don't want to risk any more damage on him, so that's why I make the Freezer Burn combo here, because the attack will make it all the way over there. I will get a 9 heal all to boost up the Freezer Burn in slot 1, and it is over this turn. Next up is Luishi. Let's see here. Well, my only character's Fry, so we're going to open up with the Doomsday, because I do like the Freezer Burn potential, and if I draw Amy or something else, there is more potential with that than there is with the Long Stick. So Luishi plays his Hip Hop Bob there. So we're going to go ahead and combo to the Freezer Burn, because that's the only combo I can make. Luckily, the Cripple and Gas will serve me well to take out the Hip Hop Bob before it does any sort of major damage on me. Luishi does drop his Mythic Bob, though, in slot 2, which is nice. So I now need to come up with a counter for that. So, a couple different ways I can play this. I could try to play my um, Cat Launcher there for the health, as well as having um, higher shield. I could play the Long Stick there for the higher health. It'll have some shield, but it'll also have the Punch and Gas to Gas Bob. However, I think Cartel Klaus might be the better way to go. Here's why. Cartel has high health or high HP there for the shield. It also has the gas, so it'll be gassing the Bob there. It has the leech if I need to get the health back. And one of Bob's combos does have craze, so that nine hijack could keep it from getting off the ground. So I do believe Cartel was the best move there in that instance. All right, at this point, I have really nothing I can play for combos. I am gonna play the long stick though, just cause it is high HP and it does have a heal all to arm card. So that can be a health increaser for me should I need to increase my health more. I do get some lucky cripples there on the Bob though to make sure that it's not gonna be breaking through my shields on Cartel, which is nice. They dropped the Leela there in slot three, so I'm gonna be hijacking all of that Motivate, which is nice from that. So Bob's still not gonna be able to break through right now. My Freezer Burn is injured a bit, however, Long Stick can heal that up should I need it. At this point, I'm just going to keep expanding my Health Wall. We're going to do that with Bazanga, because I do have that um, Bodyguard there to protect it and the Flank card on the left there. And it also does have that 14 heal to an Arm card, should I need to heal up more cards to get my health all the way back up to full here. Bender is going to be falling this turn, so is the Bob, so I'm in a pretty good spot here. Unfortunately, the Leela is not going anywhere, but all of my cards are at least pretty high on health. 
and they don't combo the Lila, they play the Nibbler there in the first slot, it is going to be over this turn. So there's no need for me to combo anything. I can go ahead and just throw out my um, my highest HP card to expand the health here because the attack will be getting over there to the Bazanga Bazooka. So that should be enough to end this, I believe. No, you know what? My math was wrong there. I am better off comboing because I do want to end it this turn. So we are going to do that because I'm at least still getting a heal here. My um, long stick, it is going to have to go all the way to the Whale Hunter to get the final hit kill here. And my long stick does have the heal going to Freezer Burn, which is still more than enough to get me back to full. So I did make the right move there. Instead of expanding, I did want to combo to ensure it's over this turn because now everybody's at full. That's going to be 100. And next up, we're up against Spencer. Let's see here. I have a couple options here. If I play my Doomsday, I'm locked into doing Fry because it doesn't combo with Bob. However, if I do my Antichrist, I can combo with Freezer Burn or I can go for Bob for the $300 knife. So Antichrist is the better option here as the opener, even though it is slightly less attack. So Spencer opens with a Quad Bender. So based on my options now here, I am going to make the $300 knife just because it has, still has the cripple like the, um, like the Freezer Burn would have, but it also has my Craze here. And it has Jab to break through the wall there, so I think that was the better move there to try to get a hard-hitting card in slot 1. So Spencer does combo into Bender's weapons. So it's not going down anytime soon, and it does have that 26 bomb, which is annoying. That means whatever I play down in slot 2 is going to be getting hit kind of hard. I do have some options, though. If I play my long stick on the field here, it will have a bit more shield, and it gives me some combo potential between Peggy and Fry. Or if I decide to leave it on the field, I do have my Doomsday, so I do have a healing combo I could make with the Battle Axe Peggy, too. So I do have some options here. It's just about how I go about playing it. Like, if I went to play Doomsday here now, it's too low HP. It would get bombed pretty hard. So I do think Long Stick is the best way to go because of the higher HP on there. It gives me more shield and less likely that it's going to get destroyed. So $300 Knife luckily did do quite a bit of damage there. The Kiro did cheer Bender's weapons, though, so I am taking the bomb damage here, unfortunately. All right, so they do have the, the Mythic Stand there in slot two. I do want to combo now on this slot, though, because if I don't combo, I risk losing my card if they combo into Rapture Stand. So I have to decide between the Peggy or Congo Jack. Peggy would have the punches with it, um, but I think the Congo Jack might be better. I don't know. It's a tough call. I believe I did do the Paddling Peggy because I wanted another craze combo there but i think a better move in um retrospect might have been the congo jack for the jab to break through all the walls and shields of stand it would have been another cripple and then i could have set up the heal combo with peggy in the final slot so that might have been my mistake there so spencer plays a cartel klaus in slot number one there yes yeah, so if you look stand got his attack in and he's starting to craze so at this point i'm going to play my doomsday because I need to get some heals now built in there, but I do think I did make a mistake with that Paddling Peggy. We'll see, though. We'll see how the score plays out. So my $300 knife will be one-shotting the Cartel Klaus, luckily, because of all the jab. And Peggy was able to take out the stand, so that did work out nicely. It is over this turn, though, so playing the Doomsday device was a mistake last turn. I should have just played high HP cards. I wasn't taking into account the craze of both of my cards and that it was going to be ending. Because had I been doing um, my HP wall here, it would have been a higher score overall since Peggy's not at full. I believe this match ended up being a 99. Playing a high HP card there in slot 3 would have been possibly 100. And had I actually done my um, Congo Jack in slot 2, that could have been 100 too. Anyways, that's it for my hits against Walker's Redux and the Rumble, guys. There were a couple of mistakes I made while playing. I could have had a few higher scores. Hopefully you were able to learn from my mistakes to go forward in your own matches and future rumbles. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, please go ahead and click that like button. And if you're new to the channel, go ahead and subscribe. Thanks again for watching, guys. Till next time. Peace.